Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Steven Inks. Today we're looking at a bit of a deep cut in a well-known fountain pen brand. This is the Sailor Le Cool. Uh, and as you can see, it looks very much in size and shape like one of Sailor's most popular brands, the, uh, the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. However, it is a steel nib and it is uh, about a third the cost, a third to a quarter the cost of the uh, Pro Gear Slim. So uh, with some of the bells and whistles removed, is this pen worth it? We'll find out. This is how the pen comes in this box. Little white cardboard sleeve says Sailor on the side. Um, it looks pretty nice for a pen that's on the lower end of the um, price range for Sailor. I say lower end even though it's not really that inexpensive of a pen. It's a um, it's a uh, not priced down like like the bottom um, more affordable uh, Pilot pens or even platinum pens. Um, Sailor doesn't really have a price point that's very low for their pens, except for maybe the Feuded in Manon, which uh, was somewhere around ten dollars at the time that I bought mine. Um, but here, when I open the box, I do get a sense that there's something really quality in here comes with um, some kind of Japanese um, language something. I cannot read that, but um, it's there. A little bit of a guide to use and maintenance. Once again, um, there's images, but it's it's all in Japanese. So you know, if you don't speak Japanese, like I do not, um, you might not find that to be terribly useful. Um, two cartridges, Sailor cartridges. Uh, and this, um, by the way, this converter did not come with the pen. I bought it separately. Uh, Sailor converters are mm, pretty reasonably priced, about, I think about $6.00. And the cool thing about them is, and this is my favorite thing that a converter can do, is a twist off. So you can actually, um, you can actually get this completely apart, and you can lube it up, and you can um, clean and maintain it very well. So that's one of the things I love about Sailor. Um, Platinum's cartridges are like that too. So that's really nice. It's worth getting, I think, because I always use bottled ink anyway. I don't really love cartridges, so but I did have to buy that separately which didn't surprise me. Um, and then there's a little hideaway area here, which I don't know, you can hide a secret, but there's nothing down there. Um, and then here's a pen, move this out of the way. Um, what I see here is uh, a very quality looking pen. This is a little sleeve on here that, uh, I don't know, a lot of pens I bought directly from Japan come with this. You can see there's the the price of it in, what do the Japanese use, yen? Um, but I don't know what the conversion rate is for that. Um, and prices are always changing, but it says Sailor Japan on the back and Le Cool, Le Coule, I don't know the pronunciation, but it's a, a pretty Le Cool pen, if you don't mind my puns. Um, the top has doesn't have that fancy fancy sailor anchor logo which would be awesome maybe they make you spring for the gold before you they treat you like that but um this does kind of feel like a nice resin um better than abs plastic for sure quick twist gets it off the um the cap is uh decently weighted i feel like it would feel good posted uh this pen is obviously it's a little short for my hands so i would say posted yeah that feels nice um, there's a little sailor action right there, and it says um, MF for the nib, so that either means medium fine, or it means that this uh, nib needs to watch its language. Um, I'm going to go with medium fine. So when I open it up, it's got a little bit of a, a give right when you twist it closed. I'm not sure what that comes from, because I thought there would be a... Um, 
an O-ring in there from the way that that untwisted, but there doesn't appear to be anything inside the barrel. Um, so that's just that. And then here's the nib section is right there. And you can pull this out, friction fit. Uh, and you can see that the nib has a little um, notch there, so it's going to seat perfectly if you return it how it is, um, which is a nice feature. A lot of pens have that. I don't really like when you have to kind of guess where it goes back in, but that you can really uh, pull it apart and put it back together easily. I like when a pen can come apart completely because that means I can clean it, maintain it, and um, you know, it just lasts longer. So with the converter installed, let's ink this pen. All right, so I'm being boring again. I'm gonna use a black ink, and today's black ink is Noodler's Bulletproof Black, which is a very nice black, a little bit resistant to water, not to the point of being waterproof, does bleed a little bit, but um, it is a favorite ink of mine. It was one of the first bottled inks I ever bought. Noodlers is a fantastic American company um, that makes very nice inks. So um, this is one of my classics. You can see it's halfway full and it's the most used ink that I have. So filling it up is a piece of cake. We're just gonna draw that down completely Submerse it in the liquid and pull it up. Usually with these pens, uh, you want to do it twice to get it really full. Sometimes, in this case with this pen, it seems that this will be the case. I need to do it a third time. That's okay. Nobody's into fountain pens because they're faster than ballpoint pens or rollerball pens. But some things are worth waiting for. Um, tapping off the edge of that ink. I got a decent fill with the um, converter and uh, just gonna dab that off with a piece of tissue. And from there, we're ready to do some practice lines. Right, so when doing some test lines for this video, I discovered something very unfortunate about this pen, uh, which is, as you're about to see, when I write with it, this is a, this is the pressure I generally have with my pens. It's really, it's just like it's almost not even got ink in it, but it definitely does have ink in it. As you can see, I already filled it up, but if I were to open this for you, you can see there's all kinds of ink in it. And I discovered um, pushing down with almost the kind of strength I would use on a, 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 an unresponsive ballpoint pen. I get a line like what I expected to get. So once again, this is the pressure I would normally have for a fountain pen. And here's with much increased pressure, like a medium pressure, to the point where I'd almost be worried about springing the tines of my nib. Um, so, and looking at this up close, um, I do see that there appears to be some weird artifacts between the tines of the nib. So, unfortunately, this pen, which is a deal more expensive than a lot of... Um, pens that I've bought from other companies like Pilot and um, Platinum for being a steel nib nibbed pen. It wasn't a cheap pen and the nib doesn't work. So that's unfortunate. I am going to uh, clean this pen out and service the nib and see if I can get something better from it because right now I just I'm not excited about using this pen and this is disappointing for what I paid. If I can get the nib working then um, I'll be excited and happy about this pen, but it's just a little disappointing that it came to me this way. So um, I'm gonna do the process that I've done uh, before on my nibs, and you can see I've got a video about it on this channel. 
uh, that I did with my Platinum Preppy. And um, let's just see if we can get something better out of this thing. All right, having cleaned up the uh, nib on this pen a little bit, I'm happy to say that, and I'm gonna draw a line directly across the top for the center of this page, I'll tell you why in a bit. I'm much happier with that result. Um, this is the worst out of the box I've seen a nib. Um, I don't know if I just got a bad one, uh, and uh, I take that with uh, what you will, but um, I really like it now that it's working. It's just weird that it took that uh, setup time. So um, the, the concept of this video, the art portion, is actually a little bit of art advice on my own, which is um, uh, some advice for warm-ups and some things that I do to warm my hand up. Uh, and I'm gonna show you this one exercise and another one that I also do often um, that's pretty fun, uh, something to do when you don't know what to draw. Um, and uh, this first one is about drawing straight lines. And you can see this line that I drew here is not perfectly straight. I still don't draw perfectly straight lines, but this does help me uh, with control. It's a little bit of a meditative exercise and it starts with drawing a line down the halfway point of your sketchbook. You can do this long ways, or, um, or short ways, obviously long ways looks a little bit better for video, so that's what I'm gonna do today. So, you starting in the center of the page, you draw a line across the side, and you'll notice that the longer the space is that you're drawing, the more you kinda have to lay the pen down gently and sort of pull your hand across. This is not exactly this halfway point, but it works and you're trying to divide the paper in half each time and so it gets a little dicey towards the uh, towards the edge of the book here but it'll be fine so again I'm just pulling and I'm focusing on keeping the line as straight as I can and also moving from the shoulder instead of my wrist I do still use my wrist sometimes when drawing shorter lines but longer straighter ones and you're really trying to get that straight line. And you can see now that I'm drawing a straighter line, I'm kind of um, holding it a little bit higher up, which is one of the reasons I really don't like step downs. And there's going to be a limit to what you can do, again, inside the margin of this book. But you want to just keep dividing the line in half until you can't. You're trying to avoid actually hitting. I'm doing this really badly right now. Forgive me. You're trying to avoid actually hitting the other lines. So um, this one here, I'm going to go in as tight as I can go before I have to move back down. So here we go again. I'm going in as tight as I can, and my goal is to not touch any of the lines in between. And... Um, it gets uh, it gets tricky, and you actually get better at it. Like right now, I'm doing this halfway point, and I started doing it about this much, but now I can actually go in. This is I'm I'm able to do it when I'm not videoing myself. I must be a little bit shaky, but the idea is to continue to draw as straight a line as you can consistently so that you can draw these lines between the other lines that you draw and uh, you end up with this kind of weird effect because you won't draw it straight that's not really the point the point is to train your eye to be focusing on what you're doing to work on how you breathe how that affects the lines that you make your focus your concentration where you hold the pen how you move your arm Anyway, um, you just keep doing this, and, and I, I could do this for an hour in front of the, the TV when I'm trying to relax or something like that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do something like this for an hour. I think you should probably um, you know, do 10 minutes at a time. Make sure that you rest your hands, your arms, so you don't end up hurting yourself, straining muscles in your hands, making it so that you can't draw anymore. Um, so that's the one exercise, and I'm going to go back and finish this up. 
um, in a little bit. The other one I wanted to do is, I'm just gonna flip this around here, uh, involves circles, because I'm actually kind of bad at drawing circles. And you might be able to see, I kind of have this pattern underneath the page over here. So what you do is you try and draw a big round circle. And again, for these smooth shapes, especially larger ones, I'm using my shoulder and not my wrist. And then I can draw some medium sized ones and I'm focusing on, this is sort of my mindfulness exercise. I'm focusing on trying to complete the circle without showing where I completed it. I am focusing on trying to make it a round shape. and not having bumps and wiggles. Of course, this won't be perfect and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is an exercise to train your eye to think. So, as you see, there's spaces in between these circles and you can draw smaller circles that fit inside those shapes. And whoops, you wanna try to not do what I just did, which is, um, I'm not gonna make that any better, uh, which is to not touch the lines there and then in between each, you wanna kind of just make another circle. Now, when you've done that, the next thing is to try and outline that circle. And this is training to uh, put your pen down and make a line that's accurate to what you want it to look like. So trying to keep the same distance between this line and the line before, you could see, again, I'm not doing it perfectly. And you can definitely see a seam where the two lines meet for this one. So the point is not to do this perfectly, but the point is to get used to making these shapes so that when you are drawing, you have some degree of control over what shapes you are making when you have a very specific line that you need to hit or a specific space that you need to fill. Um, it's a good idea also to not start and end in the same spot like I'm doing here. You get this kind of like jagged um, distracting line here. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. Um, this is Another great way to pass the time when you don't know what to draw. Practice your circles. You're gonna be practicing circles of all kinds of shapes and sizes. Uh, sometimes they get to be a little bit oblong as you kind of cut off your own space while you're moving through it, but that's okay. Um, it can look like whatever it needs to look like. It doesn't need to look pretty. It doesn't need to look fancy. It just needs to be that you're focusing on what you're doing concentrating and just kind of taking all the distractions out of your mind. This can be very relaxing to just be thinking about the paper and your lines that you're making on it. That's probably why I'm messing this up so badly because I'm talking to you while I'm trying to do it. So even in these little spaces right here, you get progressively smaller and when there's room, Make a little circle in the center, but you won't always have room. And just try to fill the whole paper up with circles. Um, again, this doesn't have to be done in one sitting. It would take me an hour or two to do all of this page, which I am gonna do, um, but it can be over several days, 10 minutes at a time, however you wanna do it. The end result of these two exercises is that they can be relaxing, they can help you de-stress if you de-stress that way, um, and they can also help you make more accurate circles and straighter lines. All right, let's get to it. So um, getting right into it, I think I noticed first of all that once I stopped talking over, um, while well, and over explaining kind of what I was doing, I found it easier to focus, and that's kind of the purpose of this exercise is focusing. Um, and one of the reasons I was demonstrating this today is, well, two reasons. One, um, you know, it's getting to be a new year and um, maybe you, uh, as well as I, have had this experience of just kind of um, 
wanting to do some new things with art. And so um, one of those things would be training your your hand, doing some mindfulness exercises that will also increase your ability to uh, draw a straight line or a circle, no matter what it is that you're trying to work on. Um, but there's another reason too, and it was just kind of um, this sort of selfish reason, is that I kind of always wondered what it would look like if I did this exercise sped up and uh, it looks kind of cool, as you can see, uh, the uh, lines and the circles as well. And there's an inherent issue with showing you this way because obviously, like I said, it, it took me a long time to do all of that. Uh, the two exercises in this book took place over um, a series of three days. Um, you can kind of see the jumps really quickly when uh, it shuts off and on again. Um, Basically, everything that you see, especially the sped up versions of things, is kind of um, fake in that, um, you know, it's sped up. It makes it look like I knew what I was doing the whole time, but there's a lot of um, hemming and hawing and, and guesswork and making mistakes and correcting them that happens when I do all my drawings. So, and this warm up exercise is no different. Sometimes when I do this, it looks really cool. Like I. I happen to think that it looked really cool um, for this video that I did, but other days it looks kind of funky and bad. And, and to be honest, that's okay because it's a warm up. So um, I think a lot of artists have their own warm ups that they like to do. I would love to hear about yours if uh, you have something different that you like. These are just two things that I'm always self conscious about straight lines and circles that don't look wobbly and gross. Uh, so practicing them a lot has done me a lot of good. Um, anyway, and also just uh, kind of talking about this pen, um, it works okay. As a matter of fact, uh, for how it started off, I was actually very worried that it would be a terrible experience. Um, after having worked with the nib, uh, it's actually a pretty great experience. It's a good pen, a nice fine line, um, decent um, weight in the hand, and um, when it's posted, it's uh, an appropriate length, but it's also nice and compact with, it, with the cap on. So um, I like it. It's something I'll be using um, for a while and uh, enjoying. Um, it's definitely not um, quite what I expected, and, and for the price point, I feel like it should be a little bit better but I don't want to give the impression that it's a bad pen because it is actually a, a pretty good pen. Um, anyway, take that for just a, as, as, what you, as what you will. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's all right. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed these warm-ups as much as I enjoyed doing them for you. I uh, hope you'll give them a try. And I hope you all are having a happy new year as well. All right, that's it. So my conclusions about this pen are a little bit of a mess. To be honest, uh, it's fun to use. It's um, interesting as a not very well-known pen by uh, Sailor, and um, maybe I'm just out of the loop of, with Sailor's pens, to be honest, it could be true. Um, but at the same time, it only worked to the level that I appreciated after I gave that nib a serious uh, bit of elbow grease. And I don't think you should have to do that with your pens. Um, take that with a, a grain of salt because I really do like this pen. Um, it's disappointing with the nib though. So I'm a little bit on the fence about how should I conclude this? I suppose you would have to say, um, if you're interested in the pen, I think you should check it out. Um, for the cost, I'm very disappointed in how the nib performed initially. And now that I have had the opportunity to um, fix it and kind of mess around with it, I find that it performs quite well. So um, there it is, the, the Sailor Le Cool, and I hope that you are having a Le Cool uh, New Year's and uh, happy holidays, everybody. Um, thanks for all much of, so much for your support of my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. 
leave a comment below telling you uh, what pen surprised you in the last year and what are you looking forward to in the new year. All right, take care everyone.